what would it look like if a whole bunch of organizations got together to help small businesses grow and flourish and also interface with bigger businesses? I had a great opportunity a little while back to speak to Joshua Johnson at the Disney Entrepreneurial Center. This is a place that doesn't really get enough credit. It's something started by Disney, but doesn't exactly have Disney's entire uh, mission in mind. It's just something where they felt like they could give back to the community from where they uh, do their business in Florida in this case, and also uh, help themselves by having small business professionals get the opportunity to understand how to better interface with Disney. Let's catch up with what Joshua has to say and let's take a quick tour of what's going on at the Disney Entrepreneurial Center. Hi, I'm Joshua Johnson with the Disney Entrepreneurial Center. I'm the client coordinator here and I'd like to welcome you for a tour. Let's take a look-see. So we house, um, you're familiar with business incubation? Sure. Um, so we basically are similar to an incubator, except we house nonprofit organizations that support the small business community. So um, where most incubators will house for-profit entities, we house organizations that help those for-profit entities. Um, there's 13 organizations here, and they all offer a wide range of services. Uh, we have a couple different chambers of commerce, such as the African American Chamber down there, uh, we have an office with Orange County uh, Economic Development, the, the uh, Chamber for Persons with Disabilities, the National Association of Women Business Owners, which I'd be surprised if they didn't have some sort of presence uh, out there at the Congress Fair this weekend, uh, the British American Chamber of Commerce, and then SCORE, uh, which is one of our, our big organizations in-house. SCORE does uh, walk-in appointments, uh, and then they also uh, set actual appointments. Uh, and basically, for any business owner that is either in business or is looking to start a business, they can come in, meet with a coach, uh, review their business plan, talk about funding, uh, talk about their marketing plan, finding their market, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, for individuals who are coming in who are just in the process of getting a business started, we normally start them off by getting them into our innovation lab, where they can come in here. Um, we've got all the computers set up so they can work on their business plans. We have uh, Business Plan Pro software on all the computers. In fact, we had Tim Barry here not too long ago uh, during a, a session. Um, so we've got that software on all the computers. We also have a whole bunch of books um, about how to start different types of specific companies. Uh, and you'll notice those are the whole series from Entrepreneur Magazine. Um, and so those are books about you know how to start a lawn care company, how to start a restaurant, things along that line. Uh, but then we also have other books about the general startup process, about accounting and finance, marketing, um, HR issues, hiring, firing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, our lab is open to the public, generally speaking, from 9 to 5. However, uh, on occasionally there are classes taught in here. And while the classes are being taught, then the lab is closed. So for example, uh, QuickBooks classes are taught in here, hands-on, so that people can actually start setting their books up. Wow. So you know, the only thing of this that makes it uh, unclear to me is the Disney logo. Okay. Why would Dis <laughs> why should Disney care to help score help small business people? Okay. Um, well, obviously Disney is the largest employer in the area, um, and they do a lot of business with a lot of businesses. And like all organizations of that size, they like to do a certain amount of business with small business owners, uh, minority business owners, women business owners. And uh, prior to the center uh, being here, if a small business owner were, were to approach Disney and Disney would say, well, you're not ready to do business with us yet. You don't understand our P process. You don't understand how an organization of our size operates. So figure that out and come back, you know. Um, but they didn't have a place to send them to, to get them to work that out. So now they can say, why don't you go to the Disney Entrepreneur Center downtown? You can learn about how to get certified as a minority you know, business owner, for example. You can learn about the RFP process. You can learn how bidding works. Um, and in fact, um, on occasion, Disney will actually come in here and they'll do seminars on how to do this with Disney. So just last week, uh, they actually did a session with that. So their manager of um, minority supplier uh, development was here, was in a room with 130 people saying, this is how you do business with us. Wow. So in a way, you're, you're, you're building interfaces. I mean, the real job here is how do I build an interface that allows me to plug in small business? Because, you know, you already, the big companies, the Cisco's of the world know how to connect. So now right. what? Right. Exactly. And so, and, but the purpose isn't just to get people ready to do business with Disney. I mean, that's obviously a, a benefit Disney has. Our purpose is to support the small business community sure. across the board. So, uh, you know, for somebody who wants to start up a small company just themselves, you know, working out of their house, uh, has no desire to do business with a large organization, we're still here to help them and support them. Excellent. One very last question on that. Um, when we, um, what's a, what's a job well done for you? What's you know the day is a good day for you? What what's the win? 
a win is every time we see somebody come through the door that realizes they need some sort of assistance and they, they know to come here to get it. And when they walk out the door, they have a sense of relief or a sense of direction as to where they're going to be going now. Great. And for people to figure more out about this online, they would go where? Uh, DisneyEC.com or Facebook.com slash Disney Entrepreneur Center. And also you're on Twitter. And Twitter.com, yes, absolutely, slash DisneyEC. How's that been? I mean, do you ever, I mean, how do you, do you prospect at all on Twitter? Uh, yes, yes. Um, well, I mean, we spend a lot of time uh, on social media, uh, primarily trying to educate the public about small business. And so, of course, that a lot of time leads to questions being asked and people wondering about the Disney name and how we're associated with that um, and people looking for assistance. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we look at all of the local chat that's going on that relates to small business and, and try to engage with those people and get them in here so they can get help. I asked Joshua, who are the kinds of people who pay for this sort of a thing? It seems to me that in, a, in an organization like this that has so many moving parts and so many great, you know, feel-good things, how do you get money for that? How do you get funding? How do you get people to care about the mission? So you mentioned about, uh, you know, getting money in for this, this place and all that. I mean, obviously Disney pays for some of it because that's, that's the name. But who else gives to this? And, and what's, the, what's their reasoning? Like, why do they want to give to a company okay. that supports small businesses? So, uh, well, we are actually a public-private partnership. Uh, Disney, UCF, and Orange County were the three founding sponsors. Um, and they all have, you know, the same reason for being involved. I mean, this is Orlando, and we want to support the local community. Uh, being a tourist town prior to, to uh, 9-11, and then experiencing, you know, what what followed, uh, realize the importance of supporting the small business community here. When you you can't just rely on, on expecting people to come here, travel here, uh, and and make money off the tourists. And so it's really about building a stronger local economy. But beyond that, we have several banks that are sponsors, uh, the Orlando Magic, Orlando Utilities Commission, uh, that all play a role in, in supporting us. Uh, the Orlando Magic, for example, just built a brand new arena, uh, which is absolutely incredible. And, you know, of course, it's important for them to have a uh, minority criteria uh, for, for their subcontractors. And so, again, you know, by us helping to, to get people ready to do business with organizations, uh, organizations of that size, they're able to come here to get plugged in, learn how to do that, you know, get, get their construction skills down and get their business skills down. And they can go and they can put in for contracts. Finally, I asked Joshua a question about his first job because he, he has a bit of an entrepreneurial past himself, which makes sense if you're going to work at the Disney Entrepreneur Center. So listen to what he says about the first time he got a job of his own and what that sort of led to. All right, so you were just talking about like your first job, and it was pretty interesting. So talk a little bit about this again. Sure. Uh, so when I was 16 years old, uh, my grandfather had asked me if I would wash his car. I told him I'd be more than happy to do that, but I had to do it at his condo so that his neighbors would see me doing it so I could try to drum up some additional business and make some money. So as I was washing his car, people walked by and jokingly say, hey, what, how about mine next? And of course, I turned to them immediately and say, pull it right around and I'll get to yours in the next 10 to 15 minutes. They didn't know what to say other than, okay. And so next thing you know, um, that led to me starting my first business, which was an auto detailing business. And that grew into, did you just keep it to yourself or did you grow employees or what'd you do? Um, I didn't grow employees, but actually well, not with that company. Um, I eventually uh, started a second company, which was auto detailing as well. Uh, the actual operation was mobile and I had a shop where I had an employee there. Uh, and then eventually I sold that to a buddy of mine as I started a career consulting in the music industry. What? Like any great entrepreneur, Joshua Johnson has moved into some new projects, but he is still helping out with Disney Entrepreneur Center. If you want to follow and pay attention to what's going on there, you can go to DisneyEC.com for more information. And also you can follow DisneyEC on Twitter, which is kind of a neat touch as well. I'm Chris Broken.